we're going to do this video using this model that was sent to me for trial and this is actually an elbow dislocation model show us how you're going to dislocate this elbow the process for dislocating this model is actually a, a combination of uh, supinating the wrist and then articulating the olecranon components above the uh, distal humerus. So from the close-up view, we have a normally uh, positioned elbow, uh, distal humerus, and olecranon, and it's sup over supin or hyper supination, and then you rotate the medial component above the humerus. Okay, give give us the skinny on elbow dislocations. Right. So. Elbow dislocations are a fairly common uh, injury that we see in emergency departments, both in adults and pediatrics. Um, while they often present with a quite robust deformity, um, reduction uh, tends to be fairly simplistic. Now, the most common mechanism as demonstrated by um, patients presenting in the emergency department for an elbow dislocation is a fall on an outstretched arm. Uh, this often culminates in a posterior dislocation which is by far the most common of the uh, dislocation types. Um, the other one is anterior. So what's the terrible triad? Yeah, so the terrible triad is a combination of injuries seen with an elbow dislocation, fracture of the radial head, and a fracture of the coronoid process, culminating in a uh, more severe case of an elbow fracture. With long-term complications and Correct. repairs that are more difficult. Correct. Okay. Obviously, the speed of getting the reduction accomplished is important, but documenting before you do a procedure, your neurovascular status is very important. Right. So now I'm going to demonstrate how to reduce a posteriorly dislocated elbow um, by traction and uh, counterpositioning of the olecranon process. So uh, as I gain traction uh, going in the direction of gravity, uh, I'm also going to be pushing on the olecranon process and moving the uh, olecranon over the coronoid process. Good. Posterior dislocations are by far the most common. Uh, in addition to that, posterior and lateral dislocations um, tend to be more common than the posterior and medial dislocation subtypes. Um, in order to reduce a lateral dislocation, you need to be applying medial pressure as you're applying your traction. The, count, the opposite is true when you have a medial dislocation uh, with a posterior dislocation of the elbow. So I'm gonna demonstrate uh, how to reduce a posterior and lateral dislocation, uh, just with the understanding that if it was medially translocated, you'd be doing the opposite. So uh, you've got an assistant providing stabilization of the humerus. You've got traction with your dominant hand. And as you pull, you're pushing medially the forearm until it reduces into the appropriate alignment. 